I thought it would be interesting to show off what I did in terms of creating a Variac isolation transformer dim bulb arrangement. Um, because I, when, when you're plugging in equipment, and especially if it's hot chassis equipment, but even if it isn't, it's probably a good idea to, if it's unknown, to bring it up slowly, make sure it's totally isolated from the AC line and, and current limited so that if there's a dead short, at least it won't blow your circuit breaker. So um, here's this contraption I came up with uh, a few years ago. And I'll pan out because it's rather linear in nature. And of course, you know, this is nowhere near as pretty as, say, what Mr. Coulson's lab has done, but it's, it's similar in that it is on a rectangular board. But anyway, um, and there's also others who have done really slick, all-in-one um, piece of equipment type arrangement. Here's a blast from the past, as just as an insert, the Heathkit IP5220 uh, AC power supply, which was in kit form probably in the, in the 1970s or so. Um, this, this, however, does not have any kind of current limiting or dim bulb functionality. The, the only current limiting in it are the, the fuses that are on the front panel. Um, in, in addition, this had one flaw, which was that the, uh, the grounded outlets had their ground, the, their, their grounds internally connected to the chassis as well as to uh, your, your lab's ground or the incoming, uh, the incoming line ground. But here, basically, I happen to have already this uh, vintage, actual Variac branded Variac. So this is not a Chinese uh, current Variac. This is an actual genuine one from way back when. Goes from 0 to 130 volts. Uh, I actually cleaned this thing up, uh, took it completely apart, cleaned it, um, made sure it all lubricated, made sure it all worked perfectly. And actually, we wired it. Uh, with a new line cord, um, and it works fine, it always has. Um, from there, a uh, two-wire line cord goes into the isolation transformer. Um, this is actually a Jameco, J-A-M-E-C-O, isolation transformer. No, this video is not sponsored by anyone. Uh, and you can actually buy this still on the Jameco website. I think you can still get it on Amazon. Uh, and this works fine. You, you really do need to take it apart to rewire uh, both its its input and its output properly. Uh, but it's very easy. It comes apart very nicely. Uh, the only limitation to this is it's it's really only good to about 300 volt amps. So, you know, something around 3 amps worth of, of draw. And that's usually fine for most equipment that you're going to plug into this contraption. And on the primary side, that simply plugs into the very act, again, with a two-wire uh, line, little line cord. The output of that goes into the dim bulb. Uh, here I have four outlets wired in parallel um, because I could, no other reason. And this allows me to plug in uh, other bulb, additional bulbs or other bulbs of various voltages in case I want to create a um, more or less custom uh, current limiting because as you probably know incandescent bulbs particularly high wattage incandescent bulbs are getting hard to find so if for example if all you have are a couple of 50 watt or 60 watt bulbs and you, and you want 100 watts you can just plug in two, two 50 watt bulbs and that'll get you there um, anyway all four of these outlets are in parallel but practically speaking you really can only use two of them at a time um, and you'll notice a little thing that says no ground because uh, this is a two-wire cord coming out of the isolation transformer into the rest of this. So the ground pin is actually totally disconnected on all these outlets. Um, and it's, it has nothing to do with the AC or neutral side, of course. Uh, then, final, then, well, in the middle we have our on-off switch. Uh, and a switch uh, labeled current limiting or direct. And when you put it in direct, it simply shorts out the bulbs and allows no current limiting. Um, and then finally, uh, where you put your device under test, or DUT, and again, a note that this is totally ungrounded, as you want, as you really do want to do that for, uh, for an isolation setup, and a, and a little neon bulb to tell you it's on. So we can actually, we can actually turn it on, uh, I have it plugged into an outlet strip, I know this is on, uh, let's dial it, well, we'll dial it up in a minute, uh, turn it on, leave the current limit, 
and basically when we turn it on and dial up the voltage, well, the bulb comes on. <laughs> Nothing terribly uh, exciting about that. Uh, one thing I debated was the order in which to wire um, the Variac versus the isolation transformer. There's arguments, I, I've looked this up, there's arguments on the interwebs on, on doing it both ways, putting the Variac first in line or the isolation transformer first. You can do it either way. The reason I did it this way was because the, um, the isolation transformer is, is really, you know, only good for about three amps or, or so. And so I, I didn't want to load it down with the Variac because the Variac uh, on its own draws, uh, draws some current even if there's no load to it. So there was, I didn't see any reason for that to add to this little tr uh, isolation transformer's uh, capable, you know, load. So that's why, that's really why the Variac is there first. And so uh, that's how it stands right now, and it works very well. Now one thing you might notice with this setup is that there's sort of this space in the middle here uh, where it looks like something was there in the past, and yeah, there was. Um, one thing I always wanted to have on this was some sort of metering to tell me what the output voltage is. Now the Variac scale, uh, when I when I restored and, and revamped the Variac, you're able to when you take it apart, you're able to sort of move the uh, scale around so so the uh, it lines up properly with the uh, the pointer. So it's actually now fairly accurate. I mean this this is 50 volts and so on. So it's it's quite accurate. Is it perfect? No. I mean it's only it's only you know two volts tick marks here. Uh, anyway, so I, I thought I'd want a, an AC volt meter somewhere in in this contraption. And, well, I did something initially, which I'm not terribly proud of, but I'll show you. E yep. Here's what used to be wired into this. Um, and, of course, everybody will recognize this as one of those Harbor Freight Centec um, free meters. Uh, I modified this, I, I tore the guts out of this and basically hardwired in an AC input and I did fuse it for good measure, although uh, this was my AC voltage display and uh, it actually worked very well despite being what you'd call dodgy, of course, because you really shouldn't be using these free uh, multimeters um, on anything like AC mains as, as this thing is. But I had this selector switch glued to AC, you know, AC 200 volts and, and a 9 volt battery. And it actually worked, but I really wasn't terribly happy with it because I really didn't want to leave it on. Um, uh, you know, have to turn it on and off. Plus, it's uh, dodgy. But nevertheless, I used it because I had a pile of these meters in my basement. And so I thought, well, that would do the job. And, and for a while it did. But I wanted to replace this with something less dodgy. Uh, and so I'll show you the other things I came up with. So what's another approach to uh, monitoring the output voltage that you're dialing in? And well, uh, if you're into Heath kits and, and vintage equipment, you might recognize this. This is a Heath kit IM103 line voltage monitor. It's, it's really meant to be plugged into the line all the time and just display the line voltage. But of course, it's a voltmeter. Notice though that it only starts at 90 volts. So it's really meant to be a line voltage monitor. Nevertheless, if I dial this up, um, you know, it, it does work. Uh, and if I dial the Variac all the way up, I get about 135 volts, which is, uh, which is actually what exactly what the scale indicates, 132 for 135. So let's put it on a nominal 120 volts here. And if we look here, we're right on the money. So uh, obviously I did calibrate both the Variac and the, uh, the IM-103 here with a proper multimeter. Uh, and so this is certainly one approach, but I really didn't want to dedicate uh, one of these IM-103s to this function. And plus, it, you know, what would I do? I'd have to sort of mount it in here, and that's kind of silly. I, I think we can do better than that. Here's another approach I looked into, and, and this actually looked promising, at least on the web. This is one of those um, little Chinese volt amp line frequency monitor things, or meters. Um, and the idea is you, the two wires that I wired here go into the mains and it monitors the volts 
and uh, and frequency and then for amperage you run your hot lead of your line through this current monitor and it displays the amps and here is this thing plugged into uh, or at least wired into the the quick test and plugged into to the contraption um, and, and I had high hopes for this but for two reasons this isn't going to be suitable the first reason well three reasons actually the first reason is it's not terribly accurate at least not accurate enough for, for my uh, my purposes you noticed I had calibrated the variac and right now the variac is at 122 volts um, and this is showing 120 um, so it's a couple of you know it's a couple of percent off um, yeah I thought you know it, it ought to be better uh, the frequency at least is spot on 60 Hertz I, I know that is accurate uh, I don't have the M the M meter thing wired because I don't have a load that that's worthy of showing to you uh, but I did test it and the other problem with this is um, in order to get any reading from the M meter you, you really have to have at least one to one and a half amps going through this before it registers anything. Um, so it's, it's not, not very, uh, it's neither very accurate nor is the ammeter very suitable. I didn't really need an ammeter, but I thought if I'm going to have one, at least it should be useful. And in this case, it isn't. If I dial down the volt, the other thing is um, the volts don't update very quickly. I'm actually turning the uh, the variac at a constant speed but it's only updating maybe once a second and and so it's frustrating when you're trying to dial in a voltage okay i want 80 volts i got 81 84 let me dial down no and i gotta wait and dial and it's just let's get 80 volts here okay there we go nope now i can dial it up a bit and so the update rate is is not suitable um one thing you could say is the update rate for the analog IM103 voltage monitor was instantaneous, which is, of course, very nice. But no, this is this update's rate is, is way too slow. Again, it's really made as a, to be a line voltage or M and hertz monitor, not really as a, as a meter. Also, if I dial it all the way down, it's still working at 50 volts. Actually, here I have 40 volts, and it's actually quite accurate. The... Uh, the variac is at 40 volts, and it's at, well, 39 volts. Uh, so it's actually more accurate at the lower end of the scale. And But it will eventually go off or turn itself off because it does need a minimum amount of voltage. Let's turn it off. Let's dial it up and see when it starts up. Dialing, dialing. Okay, it showed 10 volts, 12 volts. That's actually not far. I'm about 13 volts. So eh, it's okay, but... Um, yeah, I think the my main concern is first of all the update rate is is way too slow for this to be less than frustrating to use, and the ammeter uh, just simply isn't sensitive enough, uh, given that you know the whole thing here is really meant to only supply up to three amps, yet there's two digits here and it only responds after about an amp amp and a half. So anyway, this was an interesting idea. It was worth buying, but uh, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> for this application. I'll find some other use for it so we can we can disconnect it. So here are the three things we looked at. Um, of all these things, the IM-103 is still my favorite, but of course it's meant as a monitor, not as a uh, not as a meter for a piece of test equipment. So we'll put that aside. What did I finally find? Something infinitely simpler, no need to wire in, actually rather accurate, and this is it. And I think I found these on Amazon. They're cheap, they work, and here we have 120 volts. Um, and as I dial it, it's actually, this is actually quite accurate. Uh, I'm on 120 volts on the Variac, 120 volts on the display. Um, and when I dial it down, it um, it keeps working till about uh, 60 volts, 63, starting to go at about 40 volts. Let's see, keep going down, 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 down. Oop, there it goes. 
So like the other uh, little Chinese piece of rubbish, this starts turning on at about, well, about 20 volts on the variac, but it's showing 34 volts. So it is not at all accurate at the low end of the scale. But I'm probably not going to use it there. If I dial 40 volts, it's still not very accurate. If I dial 50 volts, now it's better. If I dial 70 volts, it's, it's spot on. Here's 60 volts, eh, close enough. So if I'm going to use it between about 60 volts or 65 and up, it's quite accurate. So that's a limitation. But the thing is, is cheap enough. Here's 120 again. Uh, and it responds quickly enough that, uh, and it just, and of course, it just plugs in. So that's what I'm probably going to be using for a while on this thing. Um, by the way, you can get out of current limiting mode, doesn't matter because there's no load at all. If I put it in current limiting and unplug the light bulb, of course, it, it goes out. There we go. Um, so that is my uh, Variac Isolation Transformer Dim Bulb Current Limiting. So just a couple of closing thoughts. Um, First of all, that little plug-in uh, Chinese voltage monitor with the blue display looks a whole lot better in person than on the camera. For some reason, uh, the camera washes, it, washes the LCD display out, so it's perfectly it's perfectly clear. Nevertheless, I'm not really enthralled with it. It does the job, but what I really would like are a couple of proper analog meters, one for, volt, for AC volts going from 0 to 140 volts, uh, and another one for AC amperes going from about zero to three amps, um, because that would that would obviously respond instantaneously and, and be a much nicer solution. And I haven't found anything suitable, but if I, you know, at the end of the day, I can easily whip those up myself with some ammeters and some diodes and uh, big ass resistors. So maybe I'll do that. The other thing this thing really does need is a proper fuse. Uh, between the transformer, between the uh, isolation transformer and the rest of it, because um, although if you're in if you're in current limiting mode and you have a bulb plugged in, and your test your whatever you're testing shorts out, well, that's the whole purpose of this is the bulb simply lights up bright, uh, but there's no harm or no foul. But if on on the other hand you forget to put it in current limiting mode and you put it and you just have unlimited current coming out. Well, it ain't unlimited. If you short, and if you were to short the uh, the outlet uh, with it, in you know, going direct, um, you would probably burn out the little isolate, the secondary of the isolation transformer, and that wouldn't be very nice. So, yeah, this needs a proper fuse uh, before then. But apart from that, uh, this has served me well for several years, and um, is very very useful if you're troubleshooting or building equipment or anything that that's AC line voltage related to protect not only yourself but of course the equipment that you're working on.